What you're about to see is not meant to scare you, but rather serve as a warning. I'd like to start with a quote from John Tyndall back in 1863. To nature, nothing can be added. From nature, nothing can be taken away. The sum of her energies is constant and the utmost man can do in the pursuit of physical truth or in the applications of physical knowledge is to shift the constituents of the never varying total. The law of conservation rigidly excludes both creation and annihilation. Waves may change to ripples and ripples to waves. Magnitude may be substituted for number and number for magnitude. Asteroids may aggregate to sun. Sun may resolve themselves into flora and fauna. And floras and faunas melt in air. The flux of power is eternally the same. It rolls in music through the ages and all terrestrial energy. The manifestations of life as well as the display of phenomena are but the modulation of its rhythm. Welcome to Truth or Fiction Classified. I'm your host, Justice Knight, and on my broadcast, we cover today's headlines to beg the question, are they truth, are they fiction, or will the answer simply remain classified? By the time you're done watching today's broadcast, I don't mean to make you nervous, I don't mean to make you worried, but I do mean to make you aware, aware of why the government had to come out with a study to advise the president on what we should do in the event of an asteroid strike. So what's making them put out this study now? What's making it so significant and more maybe realistic than ever before? You're going to be shocked to find out why. To the Executive Office of the President of the United States, this is the National Near-Earth Object Preparedness Strategy and Action Plan, a report by the Interagency Working Group for Detecting and Mitigating the Impact of Earthbound Near-Earth Objects, also known as Damien IWG, of the Committee of Homeland and National Security, convened in January of 2016. The report's executive summary reads, The National Near-Earth Object Preparedness Strategy and Action Plan will improve our nation's preparedness to address the hazards of near-Earth objects, now going to be known as NEO, impacts over the next 10 years. Its primary role is to help organize and coordinate NEO-related efforts within federal department and agencies, with a particular focus on efforts that are already existing and resourced. It seeks to leverage and enhance existing assets and capabilities, national and international, public and private, to effectively manage the risks associated with NEOs. The strategy and action plan builds on efforts by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, Department of Homeland Security, DHS, and Department of Energy, DOE, to detect and characterize the NEO population and to prevent and respond to NEO impacts on Earth. So why the concern? Let's take an asteroid knocked out of its orbit, bumped into another asteroid. Let's take an asteroid, in this case it's six miles wide, that is going to directly impact New York. The explosion would be like nothing we've ever experienced. The shockwave, the destruction, would change our world forever the preparedness for something that we've never seen. The quintessential example of a mass extinction event that in our lifetime we've never seen anything even close to the magnitude, the terror, and the devastation. Goal number one, enhance neo detection, tracking, and characterization capabilities. For example, this NASA mapping from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at the California Institute of Technology. An awe-inspiring map indeed. But it doesn't become shocking until you realize how much our knowledge has grown. In the next photographic evidence, you will see, as the text states, an animation that represents a map of the increased count of all known asteroids in the solar system between January 1st, 1999 and January 31st, 2018. Blue represents near-Earth asteroids. Orange represents main belt asteroids between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. 
watch carefully as our knowledge increases and detection systems increase. The change between here, January 1st, 1999, and all the asteroids we tracked, to 2009. And then moving forward into 2018. The significance becomes readily apparent as to why our threat identification now in 2018 needs to be increased and presented to the president. I'm just wondering what asteroid trajectories they may have already identified that could be on a collision course with Earth. So there's just one of the angles that NASA's taking on their research. It's actually amazing to watch. The graphic in itself is incredible. That's not all the evidence we have, nor the warnings that we have. So let's continue forward. Goal number two, improve NEO modeling predictions and information integration. For evidence that the plan is already in effect, see this article here from NBCNews.com. Asteroid that NASA calls potentially hazardous really isn't. Here's why. It's big and fast, but 2016 NF-23 poses no danger for the foreseeable time. And you'll see there the orbit of 2016 NF-23 circling around the sun, just like the Earth, Mars, Mercury, and Jupiter, also defined here. And how close was it? Well, if you go down further in the article, you'll see at its closest approach, the asteroid will be 13.14 times the distance from Earth to the Moon, or approximately 3.1 million miles, according to NASA. The space agency estimates that the space rock has a diameter of 70 to 160 meters, or 230 feet to 525 feet, or roughly the size of an American football field, according to Johnson. It's moving at about 20,000 miles per hour. Well, why is size of the asteroid so important? They're graphing it very closely, as you'll see here. So here's the graph of near-Earth asteroid survey progress by the end of 2017. This graph basically outlines, based on asteroid size, now we're talking about asteroids, those that actually make it through the atmosphere, do not burn up and strike the Earth. And this graph shows the impact devastation going from none to city to region to continent and to global. The asteroid size ranging from 0 0.010 all the way up to 20 kilometers in size. That estimated to kill the dinosaurs being at 10. Now I'd like to show you Chelyabinsk, which happened in Russia, which technically was a meteor because it never struck Earth. But wait till you see the damage. <laughs> Now remember, this is only a meteorite. What you saw there was the sonic boom from the speed of it going by. Horrifying. Terrible. The damage done. I think you now understand the power, the terror, and the horror if these asteroids ever do strike Earth. This being only again a sonic boom. Goal number three, develop technologies for neo deflection and disruption missions. Now we're not going to spend that much time here because basically we don't have any technology yet. It does state preparing to respond effectively to a neo-impact threat scenario, including developing capabilities for fault deflection and disruption. The key word being there, developing, because they go a little bit further in the article to state, while disruption via nuclear explosive device may be the only feasible option for neos that are very large or come with short warning times. Well, that would be an understatement. 3.1 states, assess technologies and concepts for rapid response neo reconnaissance missions. This assessment should include dedicated reconnaissance via spacecraft, flyby, or rendezvous, which we have yet to do. Japan being the only one close to this, according to this article, actually trying to land on an asteroid. Reminds me of an old movie in some ways. 
We're getting closer to the end. And goal number four, increase international cooperation on NEO preparation. Well, I would certainly hope so, because an event of this scale is a global issue. It affects the entire planet on one issue. I finally hope that everyone can agree and react. Goal number five, strengthen and routinely exercise NEO impact emergency procedures and action protocols, such as this. You'll see here how they're discussing what happens before impact, impact, and after impact. Again, the modeling, detection, deflection, disruption, and mitigation all happening prior to impact and then the impact itself. After which, response and recovery would kick in up on the top international cooperation has to happen throughout. Well, you know, this goes back again to another biblical reference called Wormwood, but I'm going to go to an expert to discuss this. And here is Mr. Paul Begley. And God is saying, if you're, if you're here during the breaking of the seventh seal, you're going to face things that you may never have believed you would face. Let's go to verse 5. It says, And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar, cast it into the earth. So you have a spiritual move in heaven, taking the fire off the altar of God and casting it down. And when he does, look at the ramification. There's voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. Look at the scriptures. The first angel sounded, and there, there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees were burnt up and all the green grass was burnt up so there is a manifestation here and it's all leading us to wormwood wormwood the biblical reference to what some theorize could be the asteroid that god sends down to earth could it be a portion of our concern could it be portions of the inner workings within the government, the fear of Wormwood revealing itself? The conclusion of this study reads, Neo impacts pose a significant and complex risk to both human life and critical infrastructure and have the potential to cause substantial and possibly even unparalleled economic and environmental harm. This strategy and action plan provides a roadmap for a collaborative and federal coordinated approach to developing effective technologies, policies, practices, and procedures for decreasing U.S. and global vulnerability to NEO impacts. When implemented, the activities outlined herein will improve detection, research, mission planning, emergency preparedness and response, and domestic and international engagement. Implementing the NEO Action Plan will increase the United States' ability and readiness, together with domestic and international partners, to mitigate the impact hazard posed by NEOs, which, after everything we've seen, is more necessary now than ever, something we should have done long ago. But if you need one final reminder, look at these impacts, look at these articles, and watch to see that we still are missing asteroids heading towards Earth but yet are able now to record them in a more increased fashion. It doesn't make them any less terrifying, especially when we have no way yet to stop one that could be on a collision course with our planet. You need only ask yourself why the need now for a presidential plan for a proposed asteroid strike. you'll start to understand the significance and the modern day concern that the more we research, the more we find. We're learning every day. So hopefully somewhere within all this study, the one thing I would really love to see is how we're going to defend our planet because that is my primary concern, but yet nothing that I found in the research that was presented to you of any significance as of yet outside of, as I showed you, Japan landing on an asteroid or trying to land on an asteroid. 
But most importantly, Godspeed and God bless. I want to thank each of you again for tuning in. And if you haven't already, I hope you'll subscribe to my broadcast, share this video wherever you can, especially if you love the information that's being presented that helps to support these efforts, as do my links below with Patreon and PayPal. And if you have the means, I hope you will. And if you don't, I hope you can definitely just share these videos, add to the comments, make sure the discussion continues because we have to continue to build awareness. And until next time, this has been Justice Knight and of truth or fiction classified.